All right, so someone took me up on my offer and asked me to make a server basics video um, on mobile. So that's what we're gonna do today. Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Dimitri of Cadet Gaming and we're, today we're gonna go over creating your server on mobile. So in this video, I'm gonna aim to be very brief. Um, if you do want a full detailed video on server creation, please watch the regular version first. I will uh, include a card up above here. Um, but if you do want to know how to do some of this stuff on mobile, uh, come on and join me for this video. If you have any questions about today's video, or you just want to come check me out, play video games with some of my friends, I stream on Twitch from Friday until Tuesday, come check me out, link in the video description below, and, uh, let's just hop right into it. All right, so creating a server on mobile is, uh, quite easy. If you go down, you go and see that little plus icon in your server list, go ahead and hit that, you can do create a server. So we're going to call this Canx test server. Uh, if you want to, you can upload an image here as well, but uh, we're not going to do that right now and create server. Now you can go ahead and start sharing your link. Um, if you want to, we're not going to do that right now. And there you go. We are in test server. It gives us one text channel, one voice channel. Um, and it also throws those into their own categories. So now if you want to add additional channels, you just go ahead and click the little plus icon, add text channel, we'll call this test. And there you go. Now you have a second text channel. If you want another voice channel, you do voice channel, test, and you're done. Now the text channels and the voice channels are not limited to those actual uh, categories. So if we want, we can add a voice channel up here and you can go ahead and add them as much as you'd like. You can also go and add a category if you'd like to. So AFK, we'll call this one. And we'll add a voice channel called sleep. I can't spell. And there you go. And I'll show you what we're gonna use that for in a second. So now if we end up going to our settings, so if you click on the top little three buttons there, you click on setting, you'll now get access to all the settings. If you've looked at the desktop version, you'll notice that some of these are missing um, from the desktop version to here. And that's because on mobile, as with most mobile platforms, you lose a little bit of functionality, but we'll go over everything really quickly here. So in the overview, you get to change your region. Um, I believe by default, it sets it to whatever region you're currently in. Um, so you can just leave that if, uh, you know, you're not going to plan on changing it. So the inactive channel, that's the one that I just made. So we're actually going to set that to be the sleep. So it'll automatically move people to that channel if they've been away from their keyboard for a long period of time. Uh, you can also change the time out there. So system messages are messages like this person has joined the server or this person has boosted the server. Um, I do suggest you create a specific channel for when people join because you don't, if you're going to have a lot of people joining, you don't want that to flood the general, but it can also be a good idea to have it in the general because then it promotes people to say hello and welcome new people into the server. So however you prefer to do that, you can go ahead. I personally have my own, uh, welcome channel and then anybody who boosts gets a notification in the general. Now, the default notification settings are important depending on what type of server you're making. If you're making a community server, it will automatically, if you go and turn on the community settings, it'll automatically mention it, change it, sorry, to mentions only. If you're just doing a server with your friends though, um, all messages is fine. They'll get notified every time somebody messages in the server. If you're going to make a public server, but you're not making it a community server, I do suggest you change it to only mentions. You don't want people to be flooded with notifications because then they're going to most likely mute the server and then never participate. Um, the server invite background and banners are only available to you if your server gets boosted, which is a subscription service um, where people can pay to give your server more uh, benefits. If you want to know more about server boosting, I mentioned it in my full discord video. Um, but it just gives you a full list of benefits based on what level you're at and how many people have boosted. 
Now, before you leave, you if you've changed any settings, you'll see a little save icon in the bottom right hand corner. You just tap on that and it will bring you back and then you can leave. If you try to, if you edit something and you try to leave, it'll remind you that you have unsaved progress and that you should save it first. So next up is moderation. Moderation um, is also something that gets automatically changed if you have a community server. Um, it'll make you have, um, I think medium is the minimum that you can get on a community server. Um, I do suggest you have at least low on so that people can have to be at least verified uh, with an email to be able to use it so that you don't get people making, you know, spam accounts to hop into your Discord or what have you. Uh, it's just a little safety net and most people who set up a Discord account will verify their email address. So, Explicit media content filter. So if it's just to serve with you and your friends, not m big of a deal. But if you are going to have uh, a public server, I do suggest you at least have scan media content for members without a role or just scan media content from everybody. Now the audit log will just show um, what mod moderation or server setting changes have happened. Um, if you ban someone, if you kick somebody, all that kind of stuff goes in the audit log. You change categories, you add channels, it'll all show up here. So if you have someone else who has admin privileges, for example, you can see what they're doing um, and just kind of keep track of what's going on within the server. So this channel setting here is a nice one because this allows you to reorganize the um, order of your channels. It allows you to add channels, categories, all that kind of stuff. So the top icon here is adding a category and then a voice channel and a text channel. So if you want to do it from in here, you can do it and reorganize them, or you can do it on these server pages I showed you before. But the nice thing is if you click this three bars up the top right hand corner, you can change your sort mode. So now I can sort my categories and I can move them around. So say I want voice channels to be at the top. Now it has changed that order. So before a long, long while ago, you weren't able to change the order of channels. So if you added a new channel on your phone, to your server, it would automatically be at the bottom. You need to go into a desktop, you need to move it. Now you can utilize this, go to text channel, we'll move test above general and done. So you can reorganize everything right from your phone. This is gonna be the one that, I, this is what I use the most in terms of server settings on my phone. Almost everything else I prefer doing it on my computer. Integrations will just show um, having your Twitch set up um, if you do your integrations like Twitch with your server, it'll automatically add roles. So for example, so if we go into my server, you can see here, I have a Twitch sub role and that one is automatically created when you do your Twitch integration and it gives people the role specifically when they are subscribed to you on Twitch. So a really nice one to have and, um, if you're going to end up doing a server for your Twitch, I do highly suggest you do these integrations. Now the security tab is very simple on mobile. It is just allowing you to either enable or disable two factor authentication to be required on accounts that join your server. Um, so most people won't end up using this, but if you end up using uh, discord for something that's much more important, and everybody that is going to be joining it is someone that you know personally and that you would prefer everybody have their accounts as secure as possible you would enable this setting um, but most servers won't have this on there and emojis so you can upload all of your custom emotes um, within discord if you'd like um, you can do up to 50 if you get boosted that number gets increased to 100 150 and i think 200 is the limit um, but you can upload them right from here and it'll resize them and uh, you can change their names and all that kind of stuff. So if we take a look at my server, for example, you can see all of the emojis that I have uploaded and enabled for my server to be used. Now on mobile, under community settings, the only thing you really get to do is have a quick overview of your community settings. If you don't have community enabled, it allows you to first enable community. But if you do have community enabled, 
It allows you to just get a quick overview about where your rules and guidelines are, where the community updates will go, um, the server primary language, and then being able to disable it. And that's all you get here. So if you do have a community server, you're gonna need to use the desktop version to be able to get the most out of all those community settings. And then you have roles. Roles can be extremely important for controlling where people can go into your server, what they can do in the server, but also, like I mentioned, it can show appreciation for people who are like Twitch subs or people who boost the server. And you can also use it to just differentiate people and give people a little bit of style. So adding roles can add colors. So for example, if I wanna go ahead and add a role called green, we'll just call this green. So if you have a server with just your friends, for example, you wanna make sure that it has display role members separately from online members. And now you go back and I am going to give myself that role. Manage user. So now I am green. So yeah, if it's just a server with you and your friends, you can go ahead and do that and everybody can have their own color and you know do their own thing. It's really nice and easy. But if you go ahead and look at my server, um, roles are a little bit more in depth and complicated. I do go over this in another video. I will add it to the card above and leave a link in the video description below where I go over roles and bots and their importance and what you can do with them. Um, but you can really utilize roles to do a lot of things in your server. Uh, invites are really important. You can create invites that uh, never end. You can create invites that have a certain timer limit. You can create invites that have a certain um, join limit, so only 150 users can join, for example. Um, and this is where you can see the list of all the users that, are, that have been invited to your server. And then anybody who's been banned will show up here. So to invite someone to the server, you can invite them from here. You can create a link. You can set it to never expire. Um, you can add, you know, time limits. You can add number of user limits and you can send them to a specific channel as well. So you can send them directly to the general channel, for example. You can also change your nickname here. Um, like I mentioned before, you can create your channels and uh, create categories and you can see your boost level. So to quickly show you here, if we open this up, people have been boosting in my server. So we get extra emoji slots, we get the higher audio quality, we get an animated server icon, which I haven't made yet. Um, we get a custom background on the server invites and we get the higher stream limits, even though that's being available, being put available for everyone due to the pandemic right now. And yeah, that's it really for the most part. So if you did find this video helpful, please consider liking and subscribing, it really helps me out. Um, if you have any suggestions for future videos, please leave a comment in the section below, or if you have any questions, uh, I'd be happy to answer them. I answer them as quickly as I can. If you do want to have a little bit more of a discussion, feel free to join my Discord. Uh, I will leave a link in the video description below. Come join us, come share some memes, some pictures of dogs, pictures of food, uh, talk about games, all that kind of stuff. Uh, we'd love to have you there. Um, hope to see you there. And as always, I stream on Twitch from Friday until Tuesday. Come check me out, come say hello. Uh, I'd love to see you there, playing lots of games, and uh, Cyberpunk's in a month. I'll be doing lots of really heavy streams of that very soon. And be sure to check out for a video on Monday. I'm going to be doing a very quick Minute Monday video on a quick little solution I use for wired mice. So check me out there, and I'll see you guys then.